welcome to Come Home. I'm Jen Mallon. What a treat to be with you today. Grab your coffee, grab your tea, grab whatever is yummy to you as you just sit in focus. Look, take a minute just to be with the Lord. Take 30 minutes to sit because this show is going to be transformational. We're going to talk about something that sometimes we just skip over the pages of the Bible because we don't really understand the full meaning. It's the glory of God. There's so much in there about His glory. One of my favorite songs is, Show Me Your Glory. Today, we're going to unpack it from A to Z with our very special guest, David Herzog. He has written nine books, many about the glory. He and his wife, Stephanie, have been used overseas, major evangelistic crusades, hundreds of thousands of people coming, mass conversions, signs, miracles, and wonders. And God has anointed them and appointed them to release glory. So glory's coming in your home. Glory's coming wherever you are right now. Glory's coming to your children. It's coming to your marriage. It's coming in your personal devotional life. God wants you to understand his glory in a deeper way. So get ready, get ready. We are gonna take a quick break and we'll be right back. Hi, this is Jeremy Rosado. This is Reba Watkins. This is Ron Leaf. And I'm Nancy Leaf. I'm Ruth Mangicapri. This is Dr. Robert Watkins, and you're watching CTN. And we're glad you are. Thank you for making CTN a part of your day. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. I'm glad you tuned in today. God bless you, and thank you for watching Come Home with Jen Mallon. Well, thank you for staying because this is going to be wonderful, supernatural. You know, I pray over the guests. I ask the Holy Spirit to schedule the guests because I want you to have a now word. I want you to have fresh baked manna from heaven and you're gonna get it today. I have a wonderful man of God who is uh, out there He's stomping the ground. He and his wife and their team have gone to the highways, to the byways, to the nations. They proclaim awakening, national awakenings, and they are seeing a soul harvest like has been prophesied for these end times. So we want to squeeze everything out of him today and, and hear what thus saith the Lord has for me and you right now. So welcome, Dr. David. Thank Great you so here. much. Thanks so much, Jen. We're excited. Now, before we dig in and jump in, you've got an amazing conference coming, and I want us to just take a look at that because there could be lots of people that are that the Lord says, jump on a plane and go. And so let's go and take a look at this. Hey guys, David Herzog here. I don't know if you know this, but we are in the decade of harvest and we're about to have a harvest right here at this outdoor amphitheater, November 19 in Mesa, Arizona. You don't wanna miss it. You have to be here, bring your friends, bring the unsaved, bring your church, bring other people, go on the streets and bring people. There's gonna be massive, awesome salvations, the glory of God, the miracles, signs, wonders. There's gonna be the prophetic. It's gonna be an awesome, awesome event for the local body and the lost in Arizona. Come from anywhere in America, fly over here. A lot of the people that were at Awaken 2020 that were speaking and doing worship will be here right at this event. This is the decade of harvest. You don't wanna miss what God is doing right now, November 19th, be there.
That was powerful. I want to go. Mm. Come on <laughs> So it's, a, it's an outdoor evangelistic crusade. Yeah, right, right near Phoenix, Mesa, Arizona. Not, to, not like 30 minutes from the airport. That's wonderful. Yeah. Okay, so tell us why you decided to do this, because I know you're ramping back up after we've come out of shutdown. Yeah, so 2020, we did a, the, the only stadium event, I think, in America that a Christian event held at the Sun Devil Stadium, Awaken 2020, January 18. And then, of course, the pandemic happened. Right. And the Lord said it's time to gather again. Good. In large groups. And it's prophesied that stadiums, amphitheaters, parks will be filled. So this is following that prophetic word. And why we're doing it now? Because the Lord said it's harvest now. Yeah. We, I think this could be the last great harvest this, this decade right now. And if we don't go for it now and mobilize, we could lose the harvest. The harvest is ripe. Labors are few. Yeah. So if, you're, if you love the Lord, you love seeing people saved, come on out, bring people, get revived. Maybe you just need to see people get saved. Right. And then it gets your faith back up again, reminds you, oh yeah, salvation. Yeah, know? light that fire in you again. Yeah. Yeah, it's important. Yeah, because you don't see hardly in, anymore in America, like the old days, like the 50s, you know, the tent revivals. and the, yeah. You don't see that many open air evangelistic events in America. It's always overseas. Yeah. So it's time for America. It is. And I'm so grateful for people like you that are accepting the charge from the Lord and are being commissioned to go outside of the four walls of the church and share the love of Jesus. Amen. So important. Yeah, it's time. Now, your meetings are different maybe than like a Billy Grant type meeting <laughs> uh, because you and your wife, God has used you to just flow in signs, miracles, and wonders and just to release his manifest presence. Mm. So how did you start flowing in that? And, and how did God start saying, hey, I, I, I want you to be a glory demonstrator? Yeah. Well, Paul, when he came back from... Uh... He was in Athens, and he said to the unknown God, and he did the whole yeah. thing. But actually, that was his least successful mission trip. He didn't plan a church at that time. He came limping to Corinth, and that's when he said, I don't come with eloquent words of human wisdom, which is kind of what he was trying in Athens. He was, to, it was good, but it wasn't, there was no, he didn't move in power. He didn't, yeah. he was the only place he didn't move in power. He's a smart guy. And he says, now I come to you in demonstration of the power of God, yeah. so your faith will be in the power of God, not in just words of man. So I think in America, we used to have in the 50s, the healing revivals and the yeah. Azusas, and now it's become sophisticated, slick, but there's no, you don't really see power, healing, miracles in most, like when you turn on Christian TV, except for here, obviously, obviously. Or, or a lot of churches, <laughs> they do it, but like on the side, but not Sunday morning, because not scare yeah. the people, but, but witchcraft is increasing, the right. demonic's increasing, the new yes. age. So we have to, we, we owe it to this generation, because if we don't demonstrate, then when the pharaohs are showing, throwing their rods down, where's God's power? That's right. And so if they see a church that's just anemic and nice words, and then they see the demonic moving in demonic power, the young people especially, they'll get drawn to the demonic. So we, we have to demonstrate now. The Billy Graham days, in those days, almost everyone had a, a relative that was, that was a Christian. Right. So even if you were in, in sin or backslidden, you knew, you knew better, but you're like, yeah, I'm living this life, but I know I have a grandma praying for me. Yes. But now you have entire families that don't have anyone that's saved. So it's like starting from scratch again. So it's different than that era. People need to see, you know, seeing and hearing they believe when Philip went to Samaria, not just hearing the message. Yeah. Uh, you know, we were in Pakistan. We had 100,000 people in one night get saved. Oh, my gosh. And, you know, Muslims. Okay, wait, pause, pause. Yeah. 100,000 In the middle of a pandemic. In November 2021. one night. One night. Okay, let's just do a praise break right there. <laughs> that. That is, that is, thank you, Jesus, yeah. hallelujah. A hundred thousand souls in one night. Yeah. You got to experience that. It's crazy. You and got it, it to got see it. got canceled three times because of the pandemic, kept shutting down the country. And then a window finally opened up in November. We jumped on it and it, we, we did it. And it was amazing. But see, those people there, they're not going to believe in Jesus if they're Muslims right. and get disowned and get persecuted by their family unless they see the power of God. Yeah. We have people in stretchers, look like they were dead. They were just like not moving. And then they're jumping out of the stretchers and they're oh. healed in the middle of the thing. And so people around the world need to see and believe. Now we can't just do miracles. You need the gospel with the cross, Absolutely. the conviction of the Holy Spirit. But the, Jesus gave us the format, go into all the world, preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out demons. And I think we're not using the full gospel yeah. in America, and that's probably why we're not seeing as many salvations here. We, we've got to. The Lord told me, use it or lose it. If we don't use this time right now that we have, we'll lose something in America. So we have to 
use the time we have now. We still have freedom. We can still go outdoors and share the gospel without going to jail in most yes. places. You can still rent a park. You could still do it right now, right. but I'm not sure how much longer that'll last. Yes, I agree. And I, you, you said at the very beginning, we have to do it now because our window is closing. We see mm -hmm. more and more the, the enemy forces taking away our freedoms, totally. shutting our mouth, uh, telling us what to do, dictating, and, but God's saying, no, I, I got you. And Amen. he loves this country, yeah. but we, the remnant, the front lines, the forerunners have got to get bold and courageous yeah. and do what Isaiah 60, 60 says. And, and I read that in your book, you know, to arise and shine. Mm -hmm. Let the light come. Let the glory, for the glory of the Lord is upon us for now, yeah. not later. Exactly. These are the end times. It is. Okay, so unpack that. The end times are just everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was very deep. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Well, we're in the end times. If you don't believe it, it's very simple. I tell people, I'll prove to you we're in the end times. When you die, that's your end time. Yeah. So <laughs> live you like you're in the end times because you don't know the day or the hour you're going to go. We don't. And, and go all out. But people have been saying, all the prophets are saying, this is the decade of harvest. Yes. And we started the decade with the stadium event. Then everything shut down. The devil didn't want it. Nope. So they mass everybody. You can't speak. Right. It's symbolic. Pay. Yeah, pay. You can't speak. Yeah. So it's time to speak. It's time to do. And I think those who are the remnant, might be a small percentage, that go all out could tip the whole thing. I believe so that. So I think we're going to have, like, like in Egypt, was chaos and economic problems and frogs and the... You know, the Curses. water turned red and, yes. and the firstborn were killed, uh, the Egyptians. But in the middle of that, God's people, the remnant, had glory, yes. had revival. A lot of Egyptians came to serve the God of Israel and left with them. You know, actually it says, and a mixed multitude came out with them. That's the Egyptians who converted to the God of Israel wow. and came out. Wow. So, in the, so I believe we're coming into shaking. There's going to be a huge economic shaking like we've never seen ever in the history of the world in America very soon. We're going to have, you know, there'll be persecution. The Bible says wars, rumors of wars. We're going to see all that. And you say, oh, is that, oh, my God, is that the end? But, and they'll persecute you. They'll take you to the courts, take you to jail. Yeah. But this gospel of the kingdom shall preach in all the world, then the end. So it's going to look like it's the end. It's not the end. When you see all these terrible things in the world, that's when you know it's your time. Glory, miracles. So for us, it could be the most exciting time. I believe that. Even though in the world it's not. But if you're a Christian and you're apathetic, you're lukewarm, you're kind of, you go to church, but you're not really on fire like you used to be. It's going to be terrible because you're going to be pressured from all sides to compromise, to give into the system, to, to, to not say what, you, what the Bible says, and you'll be miserable because you either got to be hot or cold. Right. But if you claim to be Christian but you can't really be bold, you're not going to be comfortable. You're going to be very uncomfortable in these end times. So the only way is to go completely all out, fasting, prayer, repent, just go all out. And Paul and Silas, think about it, another country, we always think, well, China, Russia attack us. They were under the Roman occupation. Yeah already troops in their country. And then the religious were turning them in, their own people. And what do they do? They're having a blast, healing the sick, getting thrown in jail, getting out again. Where do these guys go? They, they couldn't stop them. Yeah, unstoppable. And I think there's gonna be a remnant, not everybody, but a remnant of people on fire that will be unstoppable. And some will be unkillable. Like Love John it. Island of Patmos, they couldn't kill the guy. They tried. <laughs> they tried. Or Paul, they probably executed him because he was stoned. That's before they legalized marijuana. Just kidding. He was I stoned. knew you were going to say that. He was stoned <laughs> with rocks, and it really hurt. And so that, that's an execution. Yeah. And he got back up. So you know, like Lazarus, like he dies, but he gets up. So it's like if, that's, if you want to be part of that remnant, there's a price to pay. There is. So I, I, people are scared right now. A lot of Christians, end times, what's going to happen, the, the system, the economic crash, persecution. But the exciting part is those who know their God shall be strong yes. and do exploits. exploits. And it says, pray that you be made counterworthy to escape these things coming on the earth. Yeah. So for those who are all out, there's an escape. It's the glory of God. Yes. It's a supernatural being transported like Philip. Yes. So either you're going to have all that happen in the end times that look crazy, or you're going to be like a lukewarm Christian, scared, and in the flesh trying to maneuver. So I'd rather just go all out. Yeah. Be all in. Yeah. Jesus was all in. The disciples were all in. And there's no fear. It, right. It's like a hurricane, right? You have hurricanes here. But when you get in the eye of the hurricane, there's peace. If you're in the center, but if you're a little on the outskirts, you're going to be moved and yep. scared. So just go to the center of it, and there's perfect peace. Yeah. And wherever you go, you're the hurricane. You're, you're destroying the devil's forces. Yes. 
And that's what we're supposed to do, Dr. David. That's what we're, we, that's why we have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's why Jesus said, I gotta go. We have it, but we need to use it. That's right. the thing, we're not using it all. Okay, so I want you to teach us how to use it. First, let me just share, a lot of the things that he's talking about are in this amazing book called Limitless Glory. You can go to his website, which is? Thegloryzone.org. I love it, thegloryzone.org, and grab this book. This is one of many books that you've written on the glory of God. That's the, that's the latest one. Okay, so let's just go back to very elementary. What is your definition of the glory of God? Okay, if you were to die right now and go to heaven, what would you be experiencing? That's the glory. But yeah. imagine having that while you're still alive on the earth. Yeah. Heaven on earth, the atmosphere of heaven, the, the presence, the love, the power, the intimacy with God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, just all in one while you're on the earth. It's like walking on the earth while you're still in heaven. And why, why wouldn't anyone that's born again not want it? Yeah, well, there's different, there's different keys to get into it, and one of them is holiness and repentance, yeah. and that's one reason why they don't, want, they don't want to give up certain things. But once you have that, when you taste of the power of the age to come, there's nothing on this earth that compares with it. And I think people have it at times, and they're, they're, they live it, then they turn away from it, they go back to normal Christianity, and they forget, I think they forget how awesome it was till they get back into the presence of the glory, maybe in a meeting or God visits them, they're like, oh, wow, I forgot how awesome this yeah. is. What was I thinking? <laughs> I don't want to do that stupid stuff. Oh, God, forgive me. And then, it, so I think we got to re re remind ourselves that the greatest time you ever had in the Lord, start there and keep going. Right. And then you, it'll be easier to, like, even sin issue. A lot, there's a lot of sin in the church. How do you give up sin? It's not just resisting it, like, oh, I keep trying to resist, but I keep falling. It says submit to God, yeah. then resist. So yeah. submit is just go all out, worship, fasting, prayer, repentance. Woo. And then when sin knocks, it's much easier if you're full Right. To resist. It's like a, you eat a Thanksgiving meal, you're so full when they bring the, the cake, you know, you're like, the pumpkin pie, you're so full you can't even. So the, here's the key is staying full, not being empty. Maybe you're not sinning, you're just not going all out for God, and then you're easily falling prey to deception, yes. to fear, to whatever. So the antidote is come close, yeah. draw nigh. Don't wait till there's a problem. Submit, right, just yeah. do it Most daily. Most people, they get a speeding ticket, oh, the police, oh, rabah shaka. Yeah, <laughs> instead of yeah. Oh, shaka you know. when they leave the house, I've right? Been there. <laughs> on fire. I came back from a rally for our a stadium event uh, in 2009, uh, 2020, right before our event, and I just came from this awesome rally and miracles were breaking out, and I was driving my car on, on Phoenix Highway, and there was a cop, and I didn't know he's pulling, I was in such glory, I, I thought it was for someone else. I'm like, <laughs> yes, Lord, bless law enforcement. Yeah, bless them, help, me, help them catch whoever it is, you know. I'm like, oh wait, he's catching me. Oh Lord, forgive me. So right away I repented. I think I was speeding, I didn't pay, it was hardly any cars on the You're road. You're in the glory. And I'm just there and he pulls, and he comes to my side, hey sir, do you know how fast you're going? Enlighten me, please, yes. I don't know. And then he tells me, and I, he goes, I go, well, I just came back from a Christian rally, we're doing a stadium event, are you, are you coming? He goes, what? Oh, okay, well, slow down and give me a warning. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So it in the offering. I've been pulled over before in the police officer because I was going to church. He said, what you were going to get, put in the offering plate. There you I'm go. like, okay. Well, yeah. girls, get it. they can just cry and then get away with it. You know? Well, I, I haven't gotten away. I, I've tried. It worked a few times, but not Well, I found time. a really good way. I don't get tickets anymore. How? I bought a radar. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes the radar doesn't go off exactly. until you're already caught. That's why caught. I'm still careful. Right. Okay, so you've been an evangelist. You are very prophetic. You, you, you're a prophet. You are an incredible Bible teacher. You are an author. You've been on the mission field in France for 12 years. Uh, you've done so much for the kingdom. 28 years full-time? 30, full -time? 30, 30 years, yeah. years full-time. Great number. So what is God saying now in this book in your meetings, when you're overseas, how do we as the body get in position? Because there is a remnant and they wanna know. Yeah, so the way to get in is to just, like I said, go all out. So even though I've been doing this 30 years, I have to continually re-give myself to the Lord, re-consecrate, okay, God, and, and really it's the cross. It's, it's you know, I, I go places I don't wanna go necessarily. Right. I do things I don't want to do, but I know the Lord's telling me to do it. And then once I do it. But not it, here, right? Oh, no, this is, no, this, no, this one I wanted to come. <laughs> okay, good. This wasn't like some third world country. Oh, so dangerous and hard. But like, it's laying down your life, not 
And that's the thing in America, life is good. So we're like, we don't want to give up our life. We right. go to church, we control our blessings. We ask God to bless what we're doing, but we don't. I found out the easy way to be blessed, find out what he's, his destiny is and do that. Yeah. Instead of doing something else, helping you blesses it. So I think it's the cross going all out. Let, like, for instance, I'm doing a three-month intensive training apostolic school um, three months straight. Sorry, next month. Wow. I don't feel like being stuck yeah. for f- four days a week and having Teaching. to slow down my schedule and train people. But I know he told me to do it because the harvest is ripe, the labors are few. we got to yeah. multiply the labors. I just want to keep going, but i got to pull back a little bit. So it's, it's laying down your life. When you do that, yeah. that's the glory, too, that comes on your life. That's when right. You, I didn't want to go to France for 12 years. Who want, I mean, I want to go on a vacation to Paris. Sure. But living Have there, the food and no, the coffee. No, but living there, a whole different deal. Not easy. And so you lay down your life, not I who live at Christ in me, and that's when the glory comes that I may know the fellowship of your sufferings, but the power of your resurrection. So yeah. the two go together. So two people are trying to kill you, the devil yeah. and God's trying to kill your flesh. Yes. So if you <laughs> let God kill you and die to stuff, you live. Yes. You lose it, you gain. Life is awesome. If you try to keep your life and, and not give things to the Lord, you end up losing. You do. You're not happy. You're not fulfilled. So you may as well just go all out. So that's the key of the glory. Um, worship, spending time in worship is yes. huge. Yes. I don't even ask him for anything unless he's there and I worship and praise him. You know, when you meet a king or a dignitary, they tell you, you approach him this way or a judge, your honor. Yes. So you praise as the fast breakthrough songs, you worship the slow, intimate, and then you wait till he fully comes. I think the waiting is the key yeah. that we don't have in America, either the Western world is I worship him, I praise him, and I wait on him yeah. and he'll show me stuff. Then I pray and things start to happen. Yeah. So there's, that's a key right there. Fasting is a big key. Yeah. And not like a lot of Americans, we fast in between our meals. <laughs> we do all night Esther fast after we had our last meal. No water, no liquids or food while sleeping. And then when I break fast, wow, I feel great. Yeah. Coffee, wow, glory. You know, so there's, there's actual fasting, like yeah. not eating food, not just fasting, but your tongue. Okay, I won't talk against the pastor for three weeks or yeah. something, or I won't criticize someone. That's great, but yeah. you should do that anyway. So of there's course. fasting, praise and worship. Um, you know, so repentance, praise and worship, fasting, and even and giving, and not just like tithes and offerings, but there's times you give a sacrifice to That's the Lord. Right. It opens something up. Like, it does. So a sacrifice could be going to live on the mission field. That could be giving your car away. Yeah. Gave my car away, my first car on the mission field. I finally got a car. I had it for a while. He goes, give it away. Oh, no. I don't, and there, I didn't live near a bus station, nothing. Oh. I, how am I going to? There's no Ubers back then. There's no taxi going to take me. And it was like, he's testing us. Yeah. And so... Just living a sacrificial life, you feel happy. You feel fulfilled. Yeah. Like when you go on a fast, right? You finish a fast. At the end, you feel great. Yeah. First day is kind of tough. First yeah. three days. But then you feel awesome. It's the same thing. So, you you know, you got to pay the price. He took up his cross. We have to take up our cross. That's right. And I think there's hyper grace teachings that the, the, the grace of God is awesome. Yes. But the Bible didn't say to focus all your thing on just grace. So the problem is, People teach grace and they make their whole ministry on grace. That's just one little part. Yeah. It's the kingdom of heaven. That's right. It's the kingdom. Yeah. In the kingdom, there's faith, there's grace, there's holiness. But don't make just grace or just a pet peeve little theology that you like that fits your thing. You need the full gospel. Yes. You know? The whole counsel of God. The grace of God. God leads you to repentance. I don't That's hear a lot right. of that grace teaching. Yeah. So. That's uh, true. But uh, there's grace. Definitely there's grace. You know, you get, you, you don't get what you deserve. There's the favor of God. Favor. Grace also means glory in other terms. I don't Ooh. see a lot of people teaching on that either. You know, it says, and great grace was upon them all, Acts 4, and they healed the sick and souls are saved and multiplied. Like they didn't fast enough to see what they're seeing. How am I seeing these miracles? I didn't pray all night. I've gone to meetings where I overslept, had to get up and go. I'm like, oh no, I missed the, the buzzard. And I didn't have time to, to really get into the, and the more miracles and glory and things happened than when I prayed all day. Yeah. Because it's not your works either. So that's where the grace comes in. But it's the glory of God. Yes. The presence. There's anointings, which are great. There's giftings. Yeah. But you can be backslidden and still operate in a gift. You're right. Even an anointing. You're but right. But glory, you have to be in intimacy. Oh, yes. So that's, and you know, the greatest thing about the glory is you're close to him. Yeah. I'd rather have the glory come in a meeting, even if no miracles happen or no prophetic words or no, but he's there. Yeah. Then to be in a meeting and watch one guy do his thing. And, you know, he's moving and getting words or there's some healing, but you don't feel God. Yeah, his presence. But you can have both. 
You can. I can tell you're hungry for this. I, I, well, I'm hungry. You already have the glory. Yes, thank God. And But I want more. Yeah. That's the thing about glory. It's unlimited. Yeah. And there's people watching, Dr. David. They want more. They're leaning in. So we're at the end of the show, but I just want you to minister, prophesy, just sure. release that anointing on you for those that are just so hungry yeah. right now. If you're watching the show and you are just desperate and hungry for this glory, just raise your hands. If you've been in apathy spiritually, just repent. Say, Lord, forgive me. I've not been seeking you like I should. I I've let the things of the world or busyness or stress, or even if you're a pastor, I think there's some pastors watching and you start off like hungry and that's why you joined. And later you got into the numbers game and comparing with other churches. And, and, you know, am I respected as much as this person? And go back to the simplicity. God, I just give you my life. I love you. Use me. Just go back to simplicity, desperateness. I pray the glory of God to yes. come on people. I pray the presence of God to come. Yes. I pray heaven would open up where they're at. The mm -hmm. blood of Jesus would cleanse anything that's hindering them right now. Any sin, just repent. Lord, forgive me. Wash me and don't just forgive me, set me free so I don't keep going backwards. I want to go forward in your glory. And there's even healings taking place and yes. miracles right now. Just lay hands on your body part wherever you're sick. And I declare in Jesus' name, mm -hmm. be healed. I see knees being healed, someone that Jesus. has uh, missing cartilage, cartilage is growing, tumors, oh, cancers, God. backs are being healed, you, eyes. Man. I see a, an ear opening up, even uh, many others I see, but I don't have time to say them all. But you know what's wrong with you. So just receive it. And if you're not saved, just ask the Lord to come in your life now. Just say, forgive me, wash me. Yes. I want to know you. I believe you died on the cross, rose from the dead. Just cry out to him. Yes. And write the show and let him know that you got saved. Thank you, Jesus. You want to say something? You know, salvation is the greatest miracle. So thank you for just leading people back. Thank you for addressing pastors. You know, part of our flesh is we get off the path. You know, Isaiah said, you know, let me set my face like Flint, you know, not to look to the left or to the right, but just to hear that still small, quiet path and voice that says, you know, this is the path, walk ye in it. So thank you for releasing glory and leading people back to it's the honor path. To do it. You have got to go to thegloryzone.org, get this book. It's powerful. One of my favorite things is he talks about in, in his meetings, he's seeing God redeem age and youth and time and, and weight loss and things that really matter to where we live. But God will do it, all right? The canker worm in your life, it, it, God's got it. He's restoring, he's restoring through his glory and God is gonna get the glory for your story. Thank you for tuning in today. We're gonna have another show with Dr. David. Make sure you stay for that. The Lord bless you and keep you. I'm Jen Nallen, come home.